I deal in crime. The American Broadcasting Company presents I Deal in Crime. Starring William Gargan as Ross Dolan. My name is Ross Dolan. And in case you're inclined to say so what, pull up a chair and listen to this. I've been a private investigator for ten years, except for a short hitch in Uncle Sugar's Navy. I've been a seaman on an LST, a gunner on a PT boat, and even made a parachute jump. That last I don't care to discuss. And just yesterday, they decided to get along without me. So I found myself on my way back to my old hangout, my office in the Melrose building. It was 8 o'clock at night, raining cats, dogs, and several other forms of livestock. I shrugged my way through the main door. Nothing had changed. The foyer still had those silly gilt figurines chasing each other around the molding. The tile floor hadn't split any wider, and the paint was just as cracked as before. Even the elevator man hadn't changed. He just added another dozen wrinkles to that piece of saddle leather he called a face. I called fourth floor. His light blue eyes lit up with a friendly gleam you find in a pair of two-cent marbles. The floor slid past as we went up. Finally, the rickety old contraption slid to a stop. I got out and walked down the hall. I stopped at 404. On the door, I read Ross Dolan, printed in gilt letters. And below it, private investigation. I was home again. The cab driver tried to jip me out of a buck. My shoes had sprung a leak in a puddle, and that granite puss of an elevator man didn't even say hello. Yeah, I sure was home again. I slammed the door and fell along the wall for the light switch. For just a moment, I looked out the window and got a panoramic gander at the town I knew so much about. Underneath all that neon and stucco, it still looked cheap and vulgar, or rich and beautiful, depending on your viewpoint. Right now, it looked cheap and vulgar. I lit the lights. The office was clean, thanks to a note I'd shot the building super a week before. I went through my mail, a couple of personal things, a... Bill from the Chronicle for my new ad. That's about all. I was about to take off my wet shoes when I heard the elevator go into a hall on my floor. Light footsteps came toward me. The door opened. She was the kind of a dame you see only in a dream. Tall, dark, and eyes that look as deep as a quarry pond on a quiet afternoon. This baby was class from head to foot, and from elbow to elbow. She seemed surprised to see me and turned to go. Wait. What's your hurry? Sit down. Take it easy. Riding up and down that elevator is quite an emotional experience. I came up here to see Ross Dolan. Well, that's fine. You came to the right place. But you're not Ross Dolan. You're a sailor. Oh, you're wrong, beautiful. I am Ross Dolan, and I'm not a sailor. Uncle decided he could get along without me after today. Uncle? Yeah, Uncle Sugar. Uncle Sam. Otherwise known as the United States. Oh, that. That. Mr. Dolan, if you're just out of the service, you probably are in need of a job. Would you like to make some money? I'm afraid I would. Uh, Money and I have been strangers lately. And should I employ you? Can you furnish references? Oh, Get out your pencil, lady, and start writing them down. Or would you rather take a fast peek at my file cabinet there? Well, there's the National Life, the American Bank, Johnny Briggs down at Homicide, and... uh, Well, shall I go on? There's ten years of references in that gadget. What are your charges? Twenty-five dollars a day, plus expenses. I see. Uh, just what is this job? And, uh, not to be too pressing, uh, just who are you? I'm Laura Shields, Mr. Dolan. And I want you to be my bodyguard. Oh, now, look, if it's just one of those tail around with me and see the big bad man doesn't hurt mama gags, you could do with a cheaper man. Get some character who's short on brains and long on muscle. You're talking yourself out of a job, Mr. Dolan. 
Do you want it or don't you? Definitely, I do. That's better. My husband and I are living in our house at Saguna Beach. He's John Shields, a promoter. Oh, I've heard of him. Could you come down tomorrow? I guess so. Give me the morning to walk up two flights and save ten, and I'll be all set. Ought to be there around three or four. Oh, fine, fine, I'll expect you. Uh, here's a check for two weeks as a retainer. Hmm. You were pretty sure of me, weren't you, Mrs. Shields? Not at all. You'll notice that I've left the top line vacant. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you have. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, Mrs. Shields. And, and by the way, uh, just what am I supposed to guard you against? Myself. Guard you against yourself? Oh, suppose we drop the double talk and get down to straight language. If you want it straight, here it is. I'm afraid I'm going to kill my husband. My... You don't need a private eye, lady. You need a doctor. Or the cops. Why don't you go to them? I couldn't go to the police. You see, I love my husband. But he's been playing around with someone else. So, it's like that, huh? And I haven't been sleeping well. Recently, I've had dreams. I, I, I dream I'm killing him. Now I'm afraid. Don't worry about dreams, Mrs. Shields. They, they can't hang you for dreaming. But they've been getting worse. I... Do you want the job or not? Well, it's okay by me. If there's any killing, it's not my funeral. <laughs> A very misplaced sense of humor. Yeah, sorry. When you get to Saguna Beach tomorrow, register at the Seahorse Inn... There'll be a room waiting for you. Say, that's a classy foxhole. And, Mr. Dolan, I hope I can trust your discretion. If word of what I was doing got out, people might think there was something wrong with me. If people knew what I was doing, they'd think there was something wrong with me, too. I got to Saguna about three the next afternoon. It was a typical coast town. Filling stations, drug stores, hamburger stands, and some kids shivering in their shorts. I asked a question. Where can I find John Shales? His home is on the West Highway. But if you want to see him in person, try Jarvis's Bluebird Inn across the street. Thanks. There was a trio there trying to play like Paul Whiteman. It looked like a pretty fair crib. I walked to a table and sat down. <laughs> you couldn't miss Shields if you were wearing dark glasses on a foggy night. He was 6'3", wore dungarees and a sweatshirt, and tried to look like a combination of Randolph Scott and Clark Gable. He didn't even come close. But there was something worth looking at. The baby was gabbing with. <laughs> She looked the way most Hollywood blondes would give their peroxide to look like. And the guy who bought her waitress uniform certainly had a surveyor's eye. I sat there. I waited. I waited some more. Finally, I got tired of that. Hey, miss. Yes, sir? I'll have a beer, please. Yes, sir. I watched her walk away, and it was better than watching Army's backfield. She came back. That'll be 15 cents, please. You from L.A.? Doing anything tonight? That'll be 15 cents, please. Okay, honey. I'm not only set back on my heels, but my pass has been intercepted and run back for a touchdown. Thank you, sir. This was the babe that Shields was nuts about. He hadn't taken his eyes off her during the whole sequence. I drank my beer, and then I went away from there. I went down the West Highway to look up Mrs. Shields. Mr. Dublin. Oh, I'm so sorry I wasn't home when you called before. But I had some errands to run, and... Uh... Come in, come in. Thanks. And here, the living room. And sit down. Have something? Drink? Sandwich? Cigar? No, thanks. It's almost seven and John will be home directly. When he comes, please pretend that you're an old friend of mine. 
You met me in, oh, San Francisco. Okay by me. And I'll call you Ross, and you must call me Laura. That will ease things up a bit, and uh, you won't mind being an old friend. Lady, please. <laughs> what have you been doing the past four hours? Oh, nothing much. Looking over Saguna Beach, watching your husband. John? Was he down at that... With that... If you mean was he down at the Bluebird with the blonde, you can pick up your dots. There are times when I... Could... Laura, hey, Laura, where are you? That's John. <clears throat> Shh. And remember the time we had all those dances on the roof? Well, 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 what's this? Old home week? Oh, darling, this is an old friend from San Francisco, Ross Dolan. Ross, this is my husband, John. Hiya, Ross. Hello. You better get going with the canapes and the drinks, Laura. We're having a party. Oh, darling, again? Yes, again. Invited Sims, the writer, Judd, the golf pro, and my dear, dear friend, Bill Jarvis. Jarvis? Yeah, you sort of met him this afternoon. He runs the Bluebird. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And old Phineas will be here, too. Oh, John, please, not Phineas. Yeah, Phineas. Phineas Ross is the old man who lives in our beach shack down below us. John gives him a little money once in a while, but... Oh, he's so dirty. John always teases the poor old thing. Yes, sir. Oh, Phineas. Sure is my meat. Oh, dear, please, not with Ross here. Who cares about him? Your friend, not mine. Let him in, Laura. And break out the drinks. Oh, Mr. Jarvis, come in. Hello, Mr. And Phineas, how nice to see you. Glad to see you. You sure look tipped off, Mrs. Shield. Never saw you looking better. Yep. Look as fit as a fiddler crab. Ross, this is Phineas Baxter. And this is Bill Jarvis. Glad to know you. Howdy. Uh, this is Ross Dolan. Seems to me I've seen you. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. You were in my place today. Well, Phineas, tell me. How's the beach coming today, huh? Scraping much away from that old devil sea. I do all right, Mr. Shields. Mr. Shields? Hey, what kind of talk is that? You know, Dolan Phineas here is something of a local celebrity. He's an author. Jonathan Keyes. Yes, sir, he's got something other folks in Saguna haven't got. But then, who wants it? <laughs> you're, uh, you're quite a comic, aren't you, Mr. Shields? <laughs> Have a thought of going on the stage? No, huh? no, no, Mr. Dolan. Mr. Shields just having a little mite of fun at my expense. I don't mind. Yeah, that's right. John always ribs old Phineas. Forget that, you fellas. What did you mean by that crack, Dolan? No, oh, nothing. Cracking down, huh? How would you like a good punch in the nose? John, he's our guest. He's your guest, not mine. I want you to make passes in the cafe this afternoon. Now I find him in the house making passes with my wife. You sure get around, don't you, Dolan? Put your hands down, Shields. You're making a chump of yourself. Is that so? Well, take a look at this. Well, if you want it that way... John. John, are you hurt? Uh, I reckon he got on the wrong side of you, mister. Yeah, reckon he did. Should have known that my wrong side is my right side. You'd better trot down to the local barber shop with me, Dolan. That eye of yours is breaking out in more colors than the Sunday supplement. Oh. You call me later, Ross. Say in about half an hour. Jarvis and I went down to the local barber. It turned out to be a pretty good Joe. In about an hour or so, my eye looked almost human. When the barber got through, I walked into the phone booth and got Mrs. Shields on the phone. Everything is under control, Ross. How's Mr. Shields feeling? A little groggy, I guess. He took the car and went for a ride along the shore. Want me to come up? No. No, I'm all right. Besides, there might be complications. I'll see you tomorrow. Right. Good night. Good night, Ross. You'd better go to bed. <laughs> Yeah? Who's there? Police. Open up. All right. All right. One o'clock in the morning. What a time to entertain a flatfoot. You, Dolan? 
That's what it says down on the register. Get dressed. What for, mister? I just got undressed. Well, reverse it, chum. We want you down at the station. Well, that's a novelty. Whatever for, officer? We want to talk to you about a fellow named Shields. Know him? Yep. See him tonight? Yep. He give you the black eye? Yep. Okay, that's all. Come on. What for? I want to talk to you about John Shields. We found him sitting in his car out of Dana Point. Why, the old rascal. Did he have a cubby little blonde with him? We didn't see her. He was sitting there alone. With a bullet hole in his temple. I guess I read too many dime detective stories while I was in the Navy. Because I'd got the idea that all small town coppers had red faces and big feet. Tommy Works said Nita. He was an ex-homicide man from the big town police crew. He kept me in his office all night, and believe me, he knew all the questions. So, uh, you're a friend of the family, is that Dolan? Yeah, you might say that. Yeah, I might say it, but what I want to know is what you might say. What do you want me to do, Works? Break out my ever shop and tell you about my lifetime? Don't get smart with me, Dolan, because we know all about you. I'm blushing in shame. Well, if you are, it doesn't show. We know that you never met the Shields any place before. Not until the other day when Mrs. Shields went up to the city and hired her. And uh, what happened in the second chapter? We wonder why she hired her. Now, Polly, you got me. I was hired to come down here and get a shiner from her husband. See it? Hmm. He's a good workman. Ever see this before? Hmm. 32 automatic. Mind if I pick... This is the baby that did it, huh? That's it. Never saw it before. I carry a 38 myself. I know. We found it when we went through your things. <laughs> you boys don't miss a trick in Saguna, do you? We can't afford to, Dolan. Here, you can take your gun back. I presume you've got a permit to carry it. Didn't you find that, too, when you went through my stuff? Here's something for your book, Sonny. The only fingerprints on the death gun were John Shields. There are powder burns on his temple. That would make it suicide. Maybe. Except I remember that appearances aren't always what they seem to be. Ah, works, old boy. You've been cribbing from the copy books again. Okay, smart guy. Here's another thing. Don't leave town. Why, I wouldn't dream of it. I love the quiet air here in Saguna Beach. Never mind, Weisenheimer. Beat it for now and tell Mrs. Shields I won't need her anymore, either. She's waiting outside. Oh, is she your guest, too? You might call it that. And Dolan. Yeah? Keep your nose clean. Oh, I do, pal. That's why I carry this box of Kleenex. Ross, is everything all right? Come on, Mrs. Shields. Let's get out of here. Mr. Works, doesn't he... He doesn't, beautiful. Out. Oh. Does he think it's murder, Ross? Works? He's not sure. Ross, what do you think? Did your husband have a lot of enemies? More than he had friends. Sometimes I think everybody hated him. I've seen old Phineas so angry that he looked positively murderous. I can imagine what about the blonde at the salon? John definitely promised me he was through with her. But still... Oh, I'm so confused. Maybe it was suicide after all. Yeah, maybe it was. See you later, beautiful. Boss, where are you going? Where polite ladies wouldn't dream of going. To Jarvis's Bluebird. The Bluebird? What for? Have to see a man. About a woman. Hiya, Jarvis. Well, well, if it isn't my black-eyed friend, Mr. Dolan. How's the glimmer this morning, Dolan? How does it look to you? It looks like it needs a drink. Have one? Thanks. Luck. And to you. <sighs> Too bad about Shields, isn't it? Yeah. Mr. Shields is all broken up. He was such a 
husky guy. Never thought he'd bump himself off. No. Well, he and that blonde were pretty close. Yeah. Very close. I wonder how she feels. Pretty bad, I imagine. No fun, uh, losing your boyfriend. Had it that bad, huh? Looked like Mrs. Shields was on the way out. And, uh, she was in. Oh, what's her name? The blonde? Yeah. Betty Warner. Uh huh. Uh, where is she now? I, uh, fired her. Uh huh. Where's she live? I'm, uh, not sure. She moved recently. Why? Oh, nothing, nothing. Just thought she might be looking for a new playmate. You work fast, don't you? Why not? Now listen, Dolan. Play off that Warner Dane. She's smart. Also, she's, uh, tough. Jarvis was right. The Warner babe was smart. It took me half the morning to get her address. I finally located her in a motel out of town a ways. I took a cab and pulled up and started to look around. What do you want, mister? I'm looking for Betty Warner. What's her number? No Betty Warner living here, mister. Well, maybe she's using another name. She's a gal about so tall with blonde hair and she walks like this. On you, it don't look good. Oh. There's a girl who might be your friend down in cabin eight. Thanks, pal. What might your name be? It might be Smith. Yeah. That's what they all say. I walked past cabin eight and around the back. There was a rear entrance, a door with a window. I could look through and see the Warner Bay packing like she had one minute to make the train. I opened the door and walked in. What do you want? Me? Oh, I just want to make with a few words. If that's what you want, go down to the library, get a dictionary. You can make with all the words you like. But, uh, I want to talk to you. Look, Mr. Dolan, I don't like you. I haven't liked you since you walked in that beer joint and cracked wise. Now get out of here, I'm busy. Leaving town? No, I'm just packing because I like the feel of leather. Did you know that John Shields is dead? <laughs> he was found in his car at Dana Point with a bullet hole in his head. No, he couldn't. That couldn't happen to him. I told her the whole story, and she sat there chewing her lips like she was wearing chocolate instead of lipstick. In spite of the fear and trembling show she put on, she looked as guilty as... Well, uh, she calmed down after a while, and we talked. We had a drink. We topped that one off with several more. And finally, she promised to hang around town if I promised to keep my mouth shut about where she was. It was a good trade. And pretty soon, I, I went down to old Phineas Baxter's shack on the beach. It was dark, and he lit things up for me. Yeah. Sure, I hated him, Sonny. I guess I hated him more than anybody in town. You're chatting your way right into the gas chamber. <laughs> you think I did it, didn't I? I'm supposing I did. I'm supposing you just uh, prove that little item. Skip it, Phineas. Why did you hate him? You know why. Uh, you saw the way he treated me last night. Well, Sonny, that ain't nothing compared to what really happened. No? You never knew I backed him when he first got to be one of them promoters, did you? Never knew it was old Phineas who put up the money, did you? I never knew that he never paid me back a single cent. Shields is, uh, was quite a guy. He was a thieving rat, that's what he was. And when I went busted and asked him for my money, he stood there laughing at me. And gave me this old shack to live in and $10 a month for polishing his car. Never paid off, huh? John Shields never paid off anybody. And there's something I know about his marriage, too. Hey. Hey. What's the matter with the lights? Where are your fuses? Right outside the door. Well, let's see whether one of them blew out or not. Boy, it's as dark as Hades out. Oh. Mr. Dolan? Mr. Dolan, where are you? Hey, hey, what's going on around here? Turn off that flashlight. No. No. No, I won't tell. Honest, I won't. The 
noise boomed around in my head, and I was sure I was back on the beach at Okinawa with the guns going full blast. Then I opened one eye and sat up in a hurry. I looked for old Phineas and found him lying on the sand next to me. Somebody had used an iron bar on him. He wasn't so nice to look at. I tried to remember what had happened just before the lights went out and remembered only one thing. Phineas saying, There's something I know about his marriage to My gun was gone, but I still had my flashlight. I looked over Phineas's place very carefully. Oh, very carefully. And found what I was looking for. Also, the old man's gun, which was something else I wanted. I staggered back downtown and made a long-distance phone call. Then I went on an errand. Ross Dolan! What's wrong, baby? You seem surprised to see me. It's rather late for a visit. Besides, I'm in seclusion. Yeah. I'm beginning to get the drift of the whole thing. Where is he? There's no one here. Oh, you're drunk. Look at your head. It's all bloody. I'm going to call the police. You're not going any place. Where is he? Let go of me! Let's drop the injured and grieving wife pose, huh, baby? Where's Jarvis? How do I know where Jarvis is? What are you talking about? It's a little late, Mrs. Shields. When I looked around Phineas's shack, I found out all about it. I found the old man's scrapbook. Or didn't you know he kept one? Ross, listen. Listen. Let me tell you all about it. Uh-uh, baby. Let me tell you. You wanted to get rid of John Shields the worst way, and you hoped to set me up as a fall guy. Or the dame down at Davis's joint. She could be a fall guy. You're crazy. I could have divorced him. It doesn't gel, beautiful. You forget the scrapbook. There's a little item in there. It tells about a woman who was paroled from a mental hospital into the custody of a man who married her. A man who wouldn't divorce her because he was in love with her. Oh, yeah, Shields was a louse, all right. But he was in love with you. That's why he was making a big play for the Warner babe. Trying to make you jealous. But you were nuts about Jarvis, who was an ex-con. I could kill you. Like you knocked off Shields? When he went for that ride, you were in the back seat. You fed him a Mickey in his last drink. Then you took his gun, held it in your handkerchief, and shot him through the temple. Ross, listen. Listen, I didn't do it. It was Jarvis. He did the whole thing. He planned it all by himself. He, he, he forced me to help him. Okay, Laura. I might have known you'd pull that reach, Dolan. <laughs> I was afraid you weren't going to make it, Jarvis. Or were you in the kitchen all the time? You're a pretty smart handy Andy, aren't you, Dolan? Uh, just stand where you are. You were the one who knocked off the old man. You followed me, didn't you? You're talking, Dolan. And you killed old Phineas when you saw he was going to spill. I think I'm going to let you have it. No, you fool. Someone will hear the shot. So what? I've got Dolan's gun. I'll hold it in a handkerchief like you did to your old man. Then, you'll find the body. Just like that, huh? Yeah. Just like that. Well, Dolan, it's been nice knowing you. Like they say in Spanish, uh, hasta mañana. Yeah. Hasta mañana. <laughs> I was watching that trigger finger, and when it started to whiten, I hit the floor, heaved sidewise, and gave it to him with the old man's gun. His bullet splashed into the carpet at my feet. I shot him through the heart. Hasta mañana always means until tomorrow, except there'll be no tomorrow for Jarvis. His light was out for keeps. Well, after I turned Laura, screaming and kicking, over to works down at the station and got myself cleared of any possible charges... I got a little sick at Saguna Beach and thought I'd powder back up to the city, stopping along the way for one or two, and listen to a little music, even if it did come from a jukebox. Well, it was more fun listening to those corny pop tunes than you'd imagine, because I picked up the blonde Betty Warner and took her along. And you know something? She wasn't nearly as tough as you'd imagine. Good night, folks. Don't forget to listen again next week, same time, when you will hear William Gargan say, I feel in crime. I deal in crime, 
starring William Gargan as Ross Dolan, is a special presentation of the American Broadcasting Company. Written by Ted Hediger, directed by Leonard Rieg, with original music composed and conducted by Skitch Henderson. Dresser Dahlstedt speaking. I Deal in Crime came to you from Hollywood. When it comes to the business of making music, we know one fellow who's dean of them all. It's Paul Whiteman. Paul has picked some songs that have proved they're here to stay, the top tunes of yesterday. It's a show you'll enjoy called Forever Tops. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.